keret tidak mampu. present my research and uh, during the past days we have talked a lot about um, many aspects um, about um, CAT and I want to see CAT um, from a different perspective uh, and uh, I want to see what's the response time on task effect in computerized adaptive testing yeah. Oh, first uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Yang Shi and I'm a third year PhD student in uh, quantitative research, evaluation, and the measurement from the Ohio State University. <clears throat> and first, let's look at the benefits of computerized adaptive testing. Actually, there are a lot of benefits. Uh, otherwise, people won't put um, so much effort into promoting CAT. Yeah. And uh, first, uh, let's talk about some. Yeah. There are research showed that um, uh, CAD could uh, have a uh, higher efficiency. It, it can reduce test length by 50% or more, and it can have a better control of measurement and precision. Yeah. Uh, uh, it means the same accuracy for all test takers, which is almost impossible in traditional paper and pencil tests. Yeah. And it can, third, it can achieve an enhanced security. Yeah questions are less likely to become well-known because not everyone are receiving the same items. Yeah. And uh, it can <coughs> force, next, and it can have an uh, immediate score reporting. Yeah. I still remember the first time I took a GRE test. Yeah, I got a, such, such a uh, surprise. And I can know my score right after the examination. Yeah, I've, I was very happy to see it. Yeah to see what, whether I, I did a good job. And, and the scores are available simultaneously. Yeah. And it can improve the test design and, and many more. And there is one more. Yeah. We can have a response time. And uh, this uh, variable or this uh, characteristic has rich information for us to mine. And uh, this is totally uh, not available in conventional paper-based tests. Yeah. Uh, for all time, for all computerized adaptive testing uh, from the log file, we can know uh, how much time yeah, each test taker spent on um, each item. Uh, so there are actually it's not a new topic, and there are already some studies on response time in cognitive tests. Yeah, I just list some. Yeah, for example, uh, how can in 2000, yeah, uh, published a paper um, item and test response times can be used for diagnostic purposes to yield additional differential information. And uh, Dr. Debug uh, and his colleagues uh, did some research about um, the relationship between uh, spontaneous speed and yeah, and uh, uh, it, it showed that it's associated with uh, higher accuracy while. Uh, imposed speed is associated with um, lower accuracy. Yeah. His um, efforts um, is to investigate um, the relationship between uh, uh, the, the, the constraint or without constraint um, uh, speed um, uh, and uh, the response and accuracy. And uh, so, <clears throat> uh, my research uh, want to investigate um, how accuracy rate evolves um, as a function uh, of three variables or three independent variables: yeah, response time, people ability, and item difficulty. Yeah, is it is this a relationship? Is a positive, negative, or is a curvilinear relationship? And uh, um, <clears throat> whether it depends on the uh, domain, domains, uh, people ability, item difficulty, or. Um, <clears throat> the underlying cognitive process also plays a big role. Uh, first, uh, let's look at my research goals. Yeah. My study wanted to determine, I uh, have three research goals. First, I want to determine the effect of time on task. 
And the second, I want to better understand the conditions that influence the direction and the strength of this effect, if there is some effect. Yeah. And the last time, I want to uh, investigate the behavioral processes and their relation to task performance in CAT. Uh, <clears throat> the research question is, yeah, uh, <clears throat> across different domains, uh, the, re the response time on task effect is homogeneous, is heterogeneous, or do we have an uniform interpretations? Um, basically, I have uh, two response and hypo research hypotheses. Uh, uh, first, I want to investigate uh, the time on task effect uh, across domains. And uh, second, uh, I want to see time on task effect uh, across uh, tasks and uh, persons. Uh, and in minutes, I will show you how I did it. <clears throat> first, let's look at uh, the model framework. Yeah. Actually, item response theory is a big family. It has many uh, models. Yeah. I will use generalized and linear mixed models. Yeah. We say GLMM. Yeah. And it is an advanced IRT model. And uh, generalized linear, it means transformation of variable to rely on a linear formulation. And why we say mixed? Because uh, in the right side of the formula, yeah, we have both fixed and random weights in the linear component. Fixed effects, uh, it refers to the constants across test takers. And uh, random effects, it refers to uh, persons and people's latent trends. And uh, let's look at um, the three components in a generalized linear mixed models. Yeah, first, it has a linear component. It means so for each pair of a person P and an item I, <coughs> a linear combination of predictors determines the probability of a person P for answering item I correctly. We denote it as an uh, eta PI. And uh, there is a linking component. Yeah. Eta pi was mapped into an interval uh, zero, 0 to 1 based on a link function on a real line from negative infinitive to positive infinitive. Yeah. And producing a probability pi pi, the expected value of y pi. And the last, it has an important um, render component uh, because in our research, uh, people's ability is a latent trait, and so uh, random component is very component is important, and uh, it refers to the probability. P pi pi is the parameter of a binomial distribution for a binary preservation of uh, pair pi, denoted as y pi belongs to zero one. This is a graphic representation of a generalized linear mixed models. Yeah, we can see on the right side and it's the linear component and, and uh, uh, in the middle is a link function and on the left is the distribution function. And uh, actually this is uh, uh, another form of uh, three GLM components for a logic model. Yeah. <coughs> And uh, uh, today, uh, my research data is from famous graduate and report examination. Yeah. And uh, there are, it actually is a small sample. It has 316 respondents. And uh, uh, as you know, GRE has two sections. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, the verbal section has, uh, has 37 items. And uh, in this field set, we have 36 quantitative items. And uh, the response are categorized into two types. Yeah, one equals to correct and zero equals to incorrect. And uh, the raw data, in the raw data, the time are in seconds. Uh, but um, when we do calculation, we do log transform. Because um, uh, 
this time transfer, uh, the, the, the raw, raw data, the time variable is not normally distributed. And uh, when we do log transform, we can pull extreme uh, long or short time into the middle part. Yeah. And uh, the response time, uh, we divided it as in two types. One refers to fast response, and zero refers to low response, refers to slow response. And this calculation is based on the medium response time per item. Yeah. Above the medium, <coughs> we call it slow, and uh, shorter, below the medium, we call it uh, fast response. Yeah. And uh, uh, because we will use our package, uh, the data is in long format rather than uh, wide format. <coughs> and uh, to do the statistical calculation, we will use an LME4 package in R. And uh, <coughs> uh, to be specifically, we utilize the uh, LMER function in IRT environment. Uh, please pay attention, uh, this function only limited to binary data or all the category data that can be decomposed <coughs> into binary data. And uh, <coughs> before the real study, uh, let's introduce, let me introduce the famous uh, response time model. Yeah, this is a very uh, well-known equation. Yeah, the response time of a person T when completing task i uh, is a function of person's speed, uh, tau p, and the task time intensity, uh, lambda i. This is the formula I used uh, in the study. And uh, basically, in this study, I have um, three models. Yeah. Uh, first, uh, I call model zero is the reference model, or uh, baseline model, or parsimonious model. Uh, in, for, for this model, I just want to test um, the difficulty of tasks across domains. Yeah. The formula is <coughs> eta pi equals to intercept uh, beta zero. It, it, it is the, uh, the, the, the <coughs> intercept of each section or, or each domain plus individual ability uh, BOP and relative easiness BOI. And uh, beta zero represents the marginal marginal log odds for correct response in a task of an average easiness completed by a person of average ability. Marginal marginal means it, 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 it refers to when we can show uh, <coughs> other independent variable or hold them constant. Here we choose uh, to 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 pick up. Um, uh, an average easiness task completed by a person of an average ability. And this is the graphic representation of model zero. Yeah, it's called a one parameter RT model or rush model. Actually, there's a hot debate. Uh, people, uh, people from rush camp can say you cannot say it is a, a one parameter. RT model, yeah, it doesn't matter here. <coughs> this is the graphic uh, representation. Now, let's look at the, the results. Uh, <coughs> so, <coughs> we just need to look at the intercept. So, from the intercept, uh, very obvious, of the verbal section, the intercept is a positive number, and the constant section is a negative number. So, uh, we know in this sample, uh, in this sample, uh, <coughs> the quantitative reasoning is harder or more difficult than verbal reasoning. And both of the two intercepts are statistically significant. And this is another, uh, I want to show you the difficulty of tasks, yeah. uh, the intensities of estimated tasks can Business parameters yeah. <coughs> beta zero plus B O I. Yeah. We can see that in the verbal section, it's uh, nearly normal distribution, but uh, in quantitative section, uh, it's highly skewed. <coughs> so it um, confirmed that uh, quantitative reasoning is harder than verbal reasoning. 
And then now, let's look at the model one. In model one, I want to detect uh, the time on task effect across domains. Yeah, and I based on based on the model zero or, or our reference model, I uh, bypass the random time on task effect. Actually, it is uh, this part. Yeah, and this is the intercept. Yeah, this is the time on task effect. This is a graphic demonstration of um, uh, model one. Yeah. Uh, you see the uh, general intercept uh, beta zero, and this is the relative task business yeah, B uh, zero I. Yeah. And uh, this is the random part. Yeah. We have another fixed part and uh, individual ability. Yeah. So in model one, yeah, we consider the how task, how time on task effect works across the list. And this is the result of model one. Yeah. In model one, we can see that the effect in verbal reasoning section is negative and significant. So that is said and correct responses were associated with fast responses. <clears throat> and in quant section, the effect, the fixed time effect in beta 1 is positive and significant. It means correct responses were associated with slow responses. So it answered uh, my first research goal or first research hypothesis. Yeah, the time on task effect across domains is heterogeneous. Yeah, for verbal task of average difficulty, correct responses were associated with, with were associated with shorter times. Whereas uh, incorrect responses were associated with longer times. And uh, in the point section, <clears throat> for a task of average difficulty, correct responses were associated with longer times, whereas incorrect responses were associated with shorter times. And uh, let's continue uh, to <clears throat> confirm my model two and yeah, to detect my model two. Uh, we introduce a by task and, and by person adjustments simultaneously. Uh, we want to know how time on task effect uh, work by task and uh, person. Yeah, you can see I uh, and answer. Yeah, uh, this refers to uh, this P refers to person. I refers to item. Yeah. So in this equation, both. Um, uh, time on task effect and by task and person uh, we can look at that simultaneously. This is the result of model two. Yeah, uh, we can see that uh, here uh, first both of them are uh, significantly significant, and uh, uh, but the variance are different. It shows that. Uh, for both the verbal and quant sections, the time on task effect varied across both tasks and the test tickers respectively. Uh, so far, maybe you will confuse yeah, what it does mean. I will show you some graphs, you will be very clear. So be patient, yeah, don't worry about it. Yeah, so now let's see. Uh, the relationship is quite complex but very interesting. Yeah. Here I uh, categorize them four types of um, combination of task and uh, people. Uh, the combination comes from the difficulty of items and uh, people ability. Yeah. So first, let's look at the plus line. Plus line. Yeah. It means uh, for easy tasks and uh, high ability person. So when high ability person encounter easy tasks, yeah. Uh, we can see that the generally speaking, generally speaking, uh, it is a negative effect. Uh, the relationship is negative, but uh, with the increase of response time, the effect become stronger 
very soon. Yeah. And uh, this tri triangle, triangle line means when low ability person encounter difficult tasks. Yeah. We can see that uh, generally speaking it's it, it is no longer negative but even with the increase of time it's even become positive. Yeah. And uh, for the we, we call it high demand. For the plus line we call it low demand. Yeah. And uh, in the middle, in the middle, yeah, uh, means high ability person encounter difficult questions and uh, low ability person encounter easy tasks, yeah, the response is uh, just in the middle, yeah. Uh, or I want to actually introduce, yeah, the horizontal <coughs> line refers to the log transport time on task. This is the verbal section. So, uh, uh, to summarize, overall, the time on task effect was negative, yeah, but it's uh, complex, yeah. Uh, fast responses were associated with some correct answers, and, uh, uh, but um, spending more time not related to greater task success and chances, and is, uh, the relationship is curvilinear, yeah. Uh, easy tasks are were more negative than difficult tasks. Yeah, I can show you again this, yeah. Uh, this uh, easy tasks, yeah, this plus line and the triangle line refers to the easy tasks, yeah. We can see that it is more negative than the middle two lines, yeah. And now, let's, uh, I, I will show you the quantity section, yeah, quantity section, but uh, the effect is opposite. Uh, I did the same thing to categorize them into four types. Yeah. Uh, the plus line refers to when high ability person encounter easy tasks. Yeah. And uh, uh, the, uh, the, the, the triangle line, triangle line uh, means low ability person encounter difficult task. Yeah. Uh, but you see with increase of time, uh, this relationship, uh, the, the positive relationship, yeah, it's a dramatically becomes positive, yeah, and uh, uh, in, for the in the middle, in the middle, when high ability person encounter difficult task and uh, low ability person encounter easy tasks, yeah, we call it the medium demand, yeah, the relationship is in the middle. So uh, to summarize, overall, the time in quantitative reasoning section. The time on task effect was positive, and the long times did uh, re associated with correct answers, and uh, short or brief times related to less task success and chances, and it's also a curvilinear relationship, and it means uh, difficult questions were more positive than easy ones. So. Uh, this is the main finding of, of my research. Yeah, it shows in this sample, uh, in this data set, it shows that the time on task effect was uh, moderated by domain yeah, and its underlying cognitive process and moderated by task difficulty and individual ability. Uh, there, this is the limitation of this study. Yeah, first, the sample size is relatively small, but I have no way to get um, uh, large scale samples. Yeah, there's no ETS guide here, but I counted, I con uh, contacted them many times, and they refused to uh, provide uh, real data. I just did it uh, from uh, a small data set from my RT course. Yeah. And uh, we cannot conclude the casual effect because we did not manipulate the speed level of test tickers uh, experimentally. In the future, uh, in the future, I think there's a lot we can do to uh, improve this study. First, um, because my hypothesis is that this heterogeneous effect was caused by uh, the underlying cognitive processing required in each section. Because in GRE, the verbal section is basically uh, to examine or assess your reading ability. And uh, uh, the quantitative section 
is assessing your methodology. And uh, I think these two types of tasks require qualitatively different uh, cognitive processing. Yeah. Um, whether it's um, controlled versus routine or something else. Yeah. And the second possibility is uh, we, should, uh, we can continue to detect uh, whether there are still the same conclusion uh, with or without time constraint. Because we know in GRE the time is constrained. Yeah. I remember in each section uh, it's allowed half an hour, 30 minutes, yeah, but it's, it's imposed. Yeah. But if we have the chance to uh, do study uh, to, to put the test takers under spontaneous speed, yeah, we, they can have they can complete the test as long as they wish. Yeah. Could we see something different? I don't know. Yeah. And uh, I think uh, this study can provide new insights uh, about um, what is the right or appropriate amount of time in CAT. How much time for each section, for each icon, because GRE is multi-stage, it's adaptive across sections, it's not adaptive across items. But no matter, uh, either way, yeah, we want to know what is the best time, what is the right time, how long we, sh we should go, uh, we should provide uh, for each section or for each item to the test takers. And under this circumstance, we can have the uh, best or maximum uh, testing or measurement information. Yeah, because too much is wasteful and costly and too little can impact our measurement validity. Thank you. Questions or comments? for taking GRE is from 16 to 64? Yeah. I, 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 don't, I don't remember exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because actually this data set provided by professor to uh, practice this uh, generalized linear mixed model. I, I emailed an ETS at least four, four times, yeah. To, to request some bigger, larger data set. I provided this research proposal. Maybe they think it's too naive, or I don't know. Yeah, so maybe yeah, next summer I can do an intern in, summer intern in ETS, and uh, I have access to large and real data sets to re-verify these findings. <laughs> yeah, a good, yeah that, that's a good question. Maybe there are different uh, aspects across different age groups or something else. But uh, for this data set, that's all I know. Yeah, I list all I know. Is there any exposure effect? Exposure effect? Some uh, students uh, uh, try to gain so many Actually, you know, GRE is very interesting uh, because um, it's famous, but um, uh, there is a controversial. Uh, there, there's a debate whether it's um, uh, a real cat because um, uh, because according to the definition, yeah, the real cat should be adaptive across items, yeah. But you know, in GRE, it's it's uh, called multi-stages. 
uh, multi stages uh, cut, yeah, is adaptive across the sections. Yeah, the difficulty of the next section you will count depends on your performance in the prior uh, section, but um, the difficulty of the next question will not change because when you receive a section, it's zero. It won't change during your test taking. Yeah, yeah. So actually, uh, I took GRE five times. So why? That's why I so I'm so interested in GRE data set. Yeah, it tortured me a lot <laughs> to apply for US graduate school. <laughs> It, it, I, I might be wrong, but it looked like you didn't parameterize your items, neither your persons with respect to the response times. Uh, there was no speed parameter in your correlation study. Speed. I can show. In this, uh, let me show you the. Uh, you mean in model or model zero or one or two? Which model? Or every? Actually, no, because let's, let, let's go to the voltage correlations. Uh, right. Cor later on, your results, your conclusions. Oh, you can go back, go back, go back, go back. I'm sorry. Yeah. Back, back. Go back. Back. So this one, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I just missed the information about how fast this, these students worked and how labor-intensive the items were. I mean, more times associated with correct answer. I mean, I can explain that away if there's, if there's a negative correlation between speed and ability in the sense that the more able students were slower. Yeah. This I have observed many, many times. You get this correlation, so it could carry all these curious correlations. Maybe here correlation is not an uh, accurate term to use. We just see a general trend. Yeah, because in verbal section, you see in verbal section, uh, generally speaking, is a negative correlation, oh. but it depends. It depends on the item difficulty and the person's ability. And uh, in. But some students are faster than others. And that's ignored. Uh, which one? Some students would work faster than others, and it's ignored in the study, so you have to hit a covariate. A covariate. Um, maybe I, I should add it in the future study, mm -hmm. yeah, to, to improve the model. Yeah, great suggestion. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much.